I'm standing in a well-known spot in the battlefield right in the center of Cemetery Ridge behind me is what's known as the Copes of Trees, which was the landmark that was given to uh, Longstreet's men for his assault, popularly known as Pickett's Charge. Uh, that was the landmark that they were aiming for, was that Copes of Trees behind me. And I won't go into the time to describe something that's well known to many of you, but just to give you a glimpse at the distance that was crossed by the men in Pickett's Charge. That tree line behind me is where they started, and right here position that was held by the Union forces Stonewall right here and then it goes up and forms an angle and that area is known as the angle and this was where the fiercest fighting was on the afternoon of July 3rd 1863 that day when 15,000 men emerged from those trees and very few of them made it this far. I'm standing at a spot known as the angle and it's called an angle uh, the angle as you can see because it's right here that the this uh, rock wall forms an angle and goes back and this right here is the monument to the 71st Pennsylvania who formed their line to the left of this position down that part of the the stone wall and it was here near the angle that General Lewis Armistead uh, one of the brigade commanders under uh, General Pickett uh, was able to, with a few dozen men perhaps to cross through the Union lines and made it to the cannon to the rear and that was the spot where Armistead was mortally wounded. Armistead was assaulting the position held by the Union 2nd Corps which was commanded by Winfield Scott Hancock who was one of Armistead's best friends before the war. And they had uh, gone their separate ways during the war and there have been times when their units had been in the vicinity of each other but on this day Armistead assaulted the position held by his one of his very best friends. And both men were, were shot that day. Uh, General Hancock was actually on his horse directing the defense and a bullet hit his saddle and drove a nail from the saddle into his, into his thigh. And it was a very serious wound. And uh, it was, at least for a little while, I thought that it could be very serious, but Hancock survived eventually became the Democratic nominee for president in 1880 and lost a narrow victory to another former Union General, James Garfield of Ohio, who went on to be assassinated a few months after he took office. But Armistead crossed the line here. The reason that his men were able to make it when so many others didn't is because uh, as Pickett's division came across from Sem uh, Seminary Ridge, he had three brigades, uh, Kemper's brigade and Garnett's brigade were in front and then Armistead's brigade were be was behind them. So more of those men survived to make it here than the men that were up front. Kemper was seriously wounded, was able to be rescued and taken back to his lines. It was thought that he would die, but he survived, went on to have a long uh, career uh, in politics that he'd had before the war. And Kemper was never seen again. He had to, or not Kemper, I'm sorry, Garnet was never seen again. Garnet had to ride a horse because he was too ill to be able to walk, but he insisted on being a part of the charge because Garnet, I believe, had been in command of the Stonewall Brigade. I know he was under Stonewall Jackson's command and had been accused of cowardice by Stonewall Jackson. Well, Stonewall Jackson died two months before the Battle of Gettysburg. Garnet was never able to clear his name, and so it was thought that he had no choice but to restore his honor by making this charge, and he died. His horse was found, but he was never found. Uh, he was probably killed in such a way as to not be identified. One last thing I want to talk about here on Cemetery Ridge, and that is this position behind me. First of all, you'll see there's a monument that um, right here that marks the spot where General Armistead fell. And just to the other side of that, you'll see these guns, and those represent the 
Battery A of the 4th United States Artillery, and that was commanded by Lieutenant Alonzo Cushing, one of the heroes of the Battle of Gettysburg, one of the heroes of Pickett's Charge. He repulsed, um, well I should say, he held this position even when most of the other guns had been taken to the rear, and he held after repeated wounds, eventually being killed by a shot to the face, and uh, not before bringing great honor to himself and to the Union Army here. And it was long overdue, but just a couple of years ago, in a ceremony at the White House, Alonzo Cushing was awarded the Medal of Honor. And I'll put a link below to that ceremony that happened with President Obama when Cushing was given that honor and members of his family, uh, descendants of his family were on hand to receive that award on his behalf.